Hi guys, so we are on to our third major uh, Chinese philosopher this week, Meng Zhe. Uh, again, we have multiple names. Meng Zhe, Master Meng, um, is sometimes romanized as Mencius, um, which uh, gives you, I guess, uh, a hint of how important this person is. Most of the people we're reading, other than Confucius, don't have standard romanizations. Uh, Mencius, Meng Zhe, is a, a very important Confucian philosopher. Um, his actual name is Meng Ke. Uh, he's sometimes called Confucianism's second sage. Um, this doesn't mean that he's like sequentially the, the, uh, the first person after Confucius, but he is uh, probably second in importance and comes not all that long after Confucius. Um, he lived roughly in the fourth century BCE, uh, which puts him, you know, as I say, a, a couple generations after uh, Confucius. Um, unlike the other people we've looked at so far, uh, Kongzhe and Modze, we actually have some of Mengzhe's writing preserved. So remember, uh, Confucius, uh, we don't have anything of Confucius's writings um, preserved. Um, the, we have a, a text named for Modze, but it's not written in his own voice. It's, there's a lot about him. There's a lot of uh, reporting what he said, but it isn't Modze's actual writings. Um, but the Mengzhe, uh, again, there's a, there's a pattern here of text being named after the philosopher there by or uh, primarily about um, the Mengzhe, that text is actually written by uh, Mengzhe himself. Um, and contrasting with the Analects, we have lots of arguments here. Mengzhe's writing has more arguments than we find in the Analects, um, which makes it um, uh, probably easier for you to work with if you decide to write an essay on um, a Mengzhe related topic, just because of how um, we teach you philosophy at this university. Um, in particular, we have both uh, arguments against rivals to Confucianism, so there are explicitly arguments against Moism, um, and also what we can see as arguments within Confucianism. So I'll talk today a little bit about uh, uh, what we can think of as a debate um, between Mengzhe and uh, another Confucian philosopher, Shunzi. Uh, I'm, I'm hesitating a little bit to say he argues against Shunzi because Shunzi comes later. He does, Mengzhe doesn't say, here's why Shunzi is wrong. But Shunzi does say, here's why Mengzi is wrong. So we have arguments within Confucianism. Um, I'm going to be brief here because uh, better video recorders have made other videos that I'll link to on this Canvas page. Um, but I just want to highlight two main points um, for you to keep in mind um, as you're reading about the Mengzi. So one major theme we get here is uh, the idea of uh, Confucianism, the sort of differentiated caring that we've talked about before uh, as a sort of uh, golden mean, not that he talks about it, it uh, a doctrine of a golden mean, but some, somewhere steering a, a sort of middle course between uh, egoism and impartial caring, the Moist ideal of impartial caring. Um, and there are uh, actual uh, rival philosophers at the time, at Mengzi's time, that he argues against who advocate either of these two things. Um, the youngest, the followers of Yang Zhu, uh, you have an, a chapter in your textbook that you're not required to read on Yang Zhu, um, and the Moists who advocate impartial caring. Uh, so that's one theme. Second theme, um, Mengzi is famous for saying that human nature is good. So we'll talk a little bit about the goodness of human nature. Um, as against uh, definitely Shunzi and I would say also the, the youngest, the followers of Yang Zhu. Anyway, um, I'm gonna give you a couple of very famous uh, passages, quotes from um, the Mengzi that will illustrate each of these two things. So first of all, here's one um, on this theme of steering a middle course between egoism and impartial caring. So this is from 7a26. You'll see when you look in your readings, there are uh, seven books of the Mengzi, uh, each of which has two halves, and then each of those has um, a number of uh, chapters, as they're called. So this is book seven, part A, chapter 26. This is a, a partial quote. So Mengzi said, Yangzi, that is Master Yang or Yang Zhu, favored being for ourselves, Here's the famous line. If plucking out one hair from his body would have benefited the whole world, he would not do it. Modza favored impartial caring. If scraping himself bare from head to heels would benefit the whole world, he would do it. 
here's somebody we know nothing about. Zemo held to the middle. Holding to the middle is close to it, but if one holds to the middle without discretion, that is the same as holding to one extreme. What I dislike about those who hold to one extreme is that they detract from the way. They elevate one thing and leave aside a hundred others. So, okay, when I say um, Mungs is setting himself up as sort of a golden mean in between um, egoism and impartial caring, we should be a, a little bit careful there. He doesn't want to say it's just a matter of being somewhere in between these two things. You can be a, a fanatical centrist. Um, yeah, there's that saying everything in moderation, including moderation. I don't know if that really applies here. That's just a silly quip. But OK, here, here's the point I want you to get um, from. So, so here's slogan form in this quote uh, of um, uh, the sort of thing that uh, Mungza advocates as going between egoism and impartial caring, right? You've got this, this one uh, lousy person who wouldn't even pluck a single hair from his body to benefit the whole world, and somebody else who um, would go to extremes to benefit the world would be too extremely sort of self-sacrificing. Um, and then this mysterious person who is somehow a, a fanatic about being in the middle. Um, you're going to see arguments in um, uh, your readings from the Mengzi that give you that tell you what's wrong with being like Yang Ju, what's wrong with being like Mozi, and those are going to center on arguments about human nature. This is going to be sort of the 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 most important. I, I would say the most important concept to grasp as you're working through the Mengzi here. So. Both Yangzi and Mozi are wrong about human nature, and that's why they're wrong about ethics. That's at least one of the arguments against them. So against Mozi, um, you'll see Mengzi argue that no matter how hard we try, no matter how hard we try to adopt their ideal of impartial caring, we still wind up caring more for those close to us, and that's fine. Um, so you'll see some discussion of like hypocritical Moists who say we should be um, impartial and care for everybody equally, but even they wind up, you know, treating their parents favorably. Um, yeah, so there are, um, Mengzi has these arguments that um, human nature uh, guides us towards being, or at least when it's developed properly, guides us towards being benevolent to others, and that the way that works involves caring more for those close to us. I'm going to say more about that in a second. Um, against Yangzi, who said, um, you know, human nature is to, you know, look out for yourself, and that's what we should do. It's it's okay to be um, egoistic. I'll say what that means in a second. Um, his uh, Mengzi's argument against this is to say, well, we have reason to think, no, that actually we all have, all humans have what he calls the heart of compassion or the sprout which is the sprout of benevolence. Um, that'll take us on to our next theme in a second. Let me just pause for a second and make sure that we're clear about what egoism is. So there is a chapter of your intro textbook uh, that I've marked as optional or recommended reading for this week on young Jew and egoism. Um, and that chapter uh, goes into some careful detail about what egoism is. For now, I just want to say one of the things you'll get in that chapter is a distinction between psychological egoism and ethical egoism. So psychological egoism is a claim about what people's about people's actual psychology. It's if you like a descriptive claim, whereas ethical egoism is a is a prescriptive claim or a normative claim about what people ought to do. So uh, psychological egoism says people are always motivated by self-interest. Um, even things that look like altruistic actions, actions in the interests of somebody else, maybe even self-sacrificing actions, um, are always, surprise, surprise, once you look under the hood um, on it, actually self-interested. People who give to charity only do so because of some benefit to themselves, maybe because it makes them feel good or maybe because, you know, it's um, for uh, uh, tax purposes. Um, maybe more interesting cases of altruism like you know, um, going out of your way to help a friend. Like, uh, you have to be very good friends with somebody to help them move. If somebody asks you to help them move, that's like the most unpleasant way to spend an afternoon. Um, why would you ever do that for anybody else? You're not moved. But maybe you do that because 
um, helping somebody else will get them to help you in the future. You can anticipate you might need to move someday, so you help other people because then you get some benefit back in the future. Um, these kinds of stories are the sorts of things that a psychological egoist would have to um, uh, commit to. An ethical egoist doesn't have to be a psychological egoist. You might say people are in fact sometimes motivated to do things by genuine concern for others in a way that doesn't uh, turn back around and uh, benefit themselves. But the ethical egoist says you should just be motivated by your own self-interest. It's always wrong or a, a mistake or something like that to do things for uh, out of concern for others unless that comes back around to benefit you somehow. So uh, Yang Ju is uh, another one of these um, classical philosophers where we have no surviving writings uh, of his own. We have no surviving writings from his own school. We, what we know about Yang Ju comes from uh, other philosophers uh, talking about disagreeing with the youngists. So we have the Mengzi here. Um, also next week, our, our philosopher will be Zhuangzi, the Zhuangzi, the book named after the philosopher Zhuangzi, um, also has some stories uh, about youngest philosophy, uh, a little more sympathetic to the youngest than Mengzi is, um, but that's what we have. Um, now, Yangzi is an ethical egoist, so he makes that prescriptive, normative claim about uh, what we ought to be motivated by, what sorts of things we ought to do, we should be self-interested. Uh, but there is a connection between the prescriptive and descriptive views, or between the prescriptive view and some de descriptive claims. So the reason why you ought to be self-motivated for Yang Yangzi has to do with human nature, which, as I said, is going to be a key thing for Mengzi. So human nature, he thinks, is uh, self-interested and you know, it's good for us to uh, express human nature, something like that. Now, Mengzi's argument against this kind of view is that is has to do with this sort of descriptive claim. It has to do with what our human nature is like. And you should definitely focus in in the uh, intro textbook on what exactly we, we mean by nature here, human nature. We mean something like, uh, for these philosophers we're looking at, when we talk about human nature, we mean something like um, the way that humans would develop if uh, given a chance, right? So you might think, look, there are lots of different ways a human can develop. Some of them are more natural than others. Some things you, you sort of need to have beaten into you. Um, you, need to, you need to uh, suppress your natural drives, urges, uh, predilections in order to get certain character traits. And other ones will develop just by being allowed to develop. Um, Okay, let me, let me give you uh, Mengzi's most famous argument for the goodness of human nature. So here's another quote, very famous quote from Book 2, Part A, Chapter 6. Mengzi said, The reason why I say that humans all have hearts that are not unfeeling toward others is this. Suppose someone suddenly saw a child about to fall into a well. Everyone in such a situation would have a feeling of alarm and compassion not because one sought to get in good with the child's parents, not because one wanted fame among, among their neighbors and friends, and not because one would dislike the sound of the child's cries. From this, we can see that if one is without the heart of compassion, one is not a human. Okay, notice what's happening there after, the, after that dash, right? He's saying, so first of all, anyone who saw this happening would feel alarm and compassion, not because of any of these other kinds of things. What are those kinds of things? Those are the sorts of things that uh, a psychological egoist might appeal to, to explain why you care about this thing happening to a child. I mean, the psychological egoist should say, you might think, um, an unsophisticated one would say, why do you care about a child falling into a well? You aren't falling into a well. Are you that child? If you saw yourself, then you would care. A more sophisticated psychological egoist could say you care about the child falling into the well because of one of these kinds of things that somehow benefits you. I don't like the way that child sounds. Um, shut them up. Okay, maybe I, I, I don't want the child to fall into the well because I want to be famous for, um, you know, saving the child or something like that. Mungsa says, no, you just feel alarm and compassion immediately 
um, on seeing the child fall into the well. This tells you something about human nature, about something that, uh, because it's universal, because it's spontaneous, um, tells us something about what's sort of fundamental to um, humanity. Um, and he goes on from here to say, so this doesn't tell you that everybody is um, benevolent. It doesn't tell you that everybody is, um, you know, compassionate in uh, heart and deed, but that everybody has at least the sprout, the beginning of benevolence. You have something in you that, if cultivated, could turn into the virtue of benevolence. Okay, if you watch the uh, wireless philosophy video that I've linked below on Canvas, um, on Mengzi, you'll see uh, some more detail about this stuff, some more um, careful discussion of the arguments. Let me just give you a little bit more and then we'll be done. So we've talked before when we talked about Confucianism about uh, thinking of it as virtue ethics and an important part of uh, virtue ethics or a story about virtues is going to be um, how you develop them, a story about ethical cultivation. And what human nature is like is going to make a difference to how we cultivate the virtues. So if human nature is basically good, as Mengzi says, then ethical cultivation is going to involve allowing people to grow and flourish according to their nature. On the other hand, if human nature is basically bad, ethical cultivation is going to involve something more like learning how to manage or counteract or mitigate our natural drives. And that's the kind of story that Shunzi is going to tell. He's going to say, contrary to Mengzi's slogan that human nature is good, um, in fact, if you leave us alone uh, and just let us develop our natural drives, we are going to be um, greedy and selfish and um, maybe even, yeah, we're, we're not going to be so good. Ethical cultivation really involves teaching us um, how to uh, sort of channel our natural drives. Um, the role of ritual is to give us... Um, Here's, a, here's something that you guys have been mentioning in tutorial, um, healthy expression of our emotions. Those are the sorts of things that we need to um, channel and fight against rather than just letting them sprout into the beautiful flower that they want to grow into. So, okay, uh, take a look at the videos below on Mengzi and on Shunzi. Um, there is an essay topic here if you want to work on it, that the, one of the nice things about Mengzi and Shunzi is they give you arguments for contrary views. So that gives you a chance to um, get involved in one of your essays and uh, explain and evaluate those arguments that take a side. Um, but this concept of human nature is going to be super important. So I would definitely recommend um, if you read any one thing from the optional chapter on um, on Yangju, chapter five, I think it was, um, I would say start with the section on uh, human nature. So section uh, two, what is the nature of a thing? That may be helpful even if you're not all that interested in Yangju himself. Um, you also have an optional chapter later in the book on Shunzi. You may find that interesting, uh, but I'm going to stop there and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.